So the drive for innovation is pulled into arguably the most innovative place on the planet, Silicon Valley, and we're in the heart of the Silicon Valley in Santa Clara. And we're at a company that's actually one of the few that actually can look down on Intel, believe it or not, and it's a startup company. Memoir. Welcome to the Drive for Innovation. survey that we've done at EE Times going back years and years and years, you have 80 to 90 percent of the respondent engineers uh, plan on doing their own startup at some point in their career. Now maybe at the end of the day, 5 to 10 percent actually do. So you guys are the 5 to 10 percent. What is it about, about you guys and your vision of the world and your knowledge of technology um, that's made you go down the startup path rather than work for an established company? Uh, for your careers? So I guess uh, for my passion, I think the passion is to find a way to change the world and whatever gifts that you're given to make that happen. So the best place to be able to change the world and bring new ideas and create a lot of innovation is through the startup path. Right, right. So, so you guys are looking at increasing the number of operations per second with your particular architecture using an algorithmic approach. Mm -hmm. Explain that. Sure. Um, so the problem we're trying to solve is essentially increase the number of memory operations, which really means the number of unique times you can address a memory and, and request data. It's a little different from memory bandwidth, which is just give me as many bits as possible. So an analogy is if you look at a hard disk and you want to read the whole sector, you can read the next 10,000 bits sequentially, and that's bandwidth, just raw amount of data in and out. What we're trying to focus is a little more intrinsic harder problem, which is how many times can you request unique pieces of data? Uh, that's really the foundation of the problem we're trying to solve. And we call that memory operations per second. MOPS. Or MOPS, yes. yeah. So we kind of coined the acronym uh, in hindsight. Uh, but the approach we've taken is a very system-centric approach. So rather than try to make memory faster by making better transistors, and there's a certain you know, law of diminishing returns now that most of the work innovation has been done in the circuit space. We've applied a sort of systems perspective to it and said, gee, if you could architecturally or algorithmically uh, make a memory faster, even though intrinsically it's still running at a slow clock speed, then what, what can be done? So, do I wanna so I think with the, the advent of this technology, what we've been able to do is make the memory building process more of a software problem instead of a hardware physical design circuit problem. Um, where are we in terms of uh, productization? I, I assume it will be an IP block maybe or something like yeah, that? Yeah, today in fact we introduced our first product based on this technology. It's called Renaissance 2X and Renaissance is because it's rebirth. we're really changing the way people imp you know, touching memory or implementing memory. 2x stands for two operations per second, not two operations per second yet, two MOPs. Later on, we'll be introducing a higher accelerated version of the Renaissance. But the 2x, uh, what's unique about 2x, in fact, if you look at the whole semiconductor ecosystem, we're able to reduce the risk, accelerate time to market, and design or produce uh, application optimized two port functionality with half the cost by eliminating the need for the industry to use what's eight transistor bit cell. Are, are we architecting a memory module itself or just attacking the, the bus, the pipeline between the memory and, and whatever engine it's, it's, it's banging on? So we, we take an existing memory macro as is. So yeah. we're not modifying the transistor layer. So we take it as is and then apply a CS style algorithmic layer in front of it, right? And so what we want to say is, well, leave this as is. You have this front end, a wrapper or an IP, if you will, and then expose more ports. So even though this memory can only do one operation per cycle, we'll expose an interface that allows you to do two or three or four operations per cycle. 
as, as Adam mentioned, Renaissance 2X, the first product, is exactly two operations per cycle. And how we do the two operations, even though the memory can support only one, is essentially a secret sauce. So guys, talk to me. When we're out on the road, we're, 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 and we're talking to engineers, entrepreneurs like yourselves, we're, we're always trying to kind of burrow into that aha moment that led you down the, the technological path that you've gone down. What was your aha moment where you realized, well, that's a logical way to approach improving memory bandwidth? So um, it took us almost, I would say, 12 months after we started my mod to really hit that aha. And it was a bunch of, you know, organic um, improvements saying, hey, I think we can do something for writes. I think we think we can do something for reads. But can we get them, can we put it together? Basically, we were adding two additional dimensions to what physical memory has now. Physical memory right now has a depth and a width. And we added the two extra components, which any number of reports, any number of reports. So that was the aha moment that basically we saw that this can be general and be applied everywhere. So every solution is a breakthrough in, in some respect, but there's always a trade-off, especially in design. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the trade-off here? Is there more overhead in programming? Is it, is it the fact that it's a new approach? Uh, uh, the, the main trade-off uh, we've done is really area. So what we're saying is, um, given your base raw material, which is a circuit, it's a one port memory, we'll add 10% in area or 15% area to make it 2x faster. We'll add another 15% to make it 3x faster, and so on. Right. So that's what we're trading off. Um, and, and you're absolutely right, there's no freelance. So a little bit more area gives you better performance. What was interesting, though, is that the raw material that we use, the one port memory, is so dense. Yeah. That even though you have the 15% area, it's actually better than using a circuit that does 2x intrinsically. And I think Adam to comment. Yeah, I think uh, even though we're adding 10 15% area overhead to make a one port, two port, the alternative is to add 100% area. Right. So from that perspective, we're saving area, we're saving power, and we're making our two port as fast as a single port. So now for the first time, the industry can focus on making single port memories from which we can then do the two port and the four ports and the 10 ports. So you guys have uh, a lot of experience with startups in your individual careers. How's this one different? All startups share one thing in common, and that is the passion and the energy level. And I think, you know, that's what I really enjoy about startups. You get an opportunity to build something from scratch and, and you have an opportunity to change the world for the better. You know, I, I, I would second what Adam was saying, uh, that the main fun is in innovation, is in being creative. I mean, at the end of the day, if, you, if you're in a deathbed and you look back at life and what you've done, you, you won't feel that you created something which is of better and different from the norm, and that you did good to the world, you know, uh, not to use the cliche, but eventually that's what makes you happy, or satisfied, I should say. There's lots of things that make you happy, but satisfaction is uh, a more longer term effect. And um, to me, uh, Memoir at least has been a foray in essentially that. We have a very broad technology, unlike some of the stuff I was involved in previously. It's really broad across the semi space. Right. And I think done the right way with the right team and right set of people, we can actually go beyond you know, being a shot in the, shot in the dark, if you will. Yeah, I think for me, I think I agree with Sundar. I think uh, I think the previous startups that, that you know I've been a part of is they were trying to solve a niche problem, and it wasn't so general as what Memoir is providing, where we're actually going to change the entire you know semiconductor world on how people do ASIC design. That's the that's the greatness about what Memoir brings to the table. 